Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today is gonna to be more of like a beginner type video. I'm gonna show you guys how I prep my cups and how I spray paint my cups to base coat them. So I get a lot of questions about when to use what kind of spray paint and why, and I hope that this video answers your questions about all of this. I'm also gonna give you some great tips on spray painting your cups to get good results every time. So I'm gonna have all the products, of course, listed and linked down below in the description box if you wanna check those out. That's definitely enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so I'm first gonna take you through all the different ways that you can prep your cup. Prepping your cup is important to ensure that all the paint and epoxy and everything that we're putting on there is going to adhere properly. There's some debate on whether or not this is a necessary step, but I would rather be safe than sorry, and I've just always done it this way for over three years now. So I'm gonna stick to what I'm doing because it's working just fine. All right, so I have got a 30 inch or 30 inch I've got a 30 ounce modern curve tumbler here from Craft Haven and I'm going to show you exactly how I would prep this so it comes in the box with that little wrap bag on it and then we're just going to take off the lid this one happens to have a screw top lid all right, and then I'm gonna put in my arm. Now, you may have different cup arms than I do. I have these ones here from the Bowen. They have newer ones with newer fancy rubber, but this is what I use with my cup turners. You can find the Bowen on Etsy, and I will have a link for them down below as well as a little discount code, okay? So you just fit your arm in, whatever you know size cup you're working with is the arm you want to use. If you don't have these kind, you can use a pool noodle or one of those foam things, whatever you prefer, or maybe a football um, on a length of PVC pipe with whatever kind of fitting fits onto your turner. And that would just go right in there. So this is what we used to use on our old turner systems. And this is what I use on my new turner system, okay? So we're just gonna fit that into the cup. I want to make sure everything is level and in there straight, okay? And then there's a couple ways that you can prep. Now, the quickest way for me is to use just an 80 grit sanding block. And I'm just going to quickly go all the way around the cup. I'm not doing anything crazy. Um, normally, I would want to have some kind of particulate mask on for this because you do not want to breathe all this kind of stuff in, but since I'm talking to you guys right now, I'm skipping the mask. All right, so we're going all the way around. I'm gonna get our bottom. I wanna put my main focus on the um, corners and the bottoms of my cup and then the top rim, since this is where the most vulnerable parts of my cup are and I wanna create maximum adhesion in those areas, okay? So that's good enough for me. <clears throat> All right, and then we're just gonna wipe this off with some either acetone or rubbing alcohol in a paper towel. So I usually keep my acetone in something like this. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. They're just those little push dispensers, or you can, I put my rubbing alcohol in here. I don't, I wouldn't put acetone in a spray bottle, but. Anyway, so I just spray this down with my rubbing alcohol. This is 91% rubbing alcohol. And then we'll just wipe it down. Okay, and so that's just gonna get any kind of, you can't really see it on this paper towel, but you're gonna get any kind of debris or like oils or things that, coatings that might've been left on the cup during the manufacturing process. Um, an alternative way to do this is if we take this over to the sink, we can use some Barkeeper's Friend or some Final Sand from DIYEpoxy.com and using a scouring pad, you would just wipe down the whole surface of your cup and then rinse it clean and dry it off with some paper towels. 
All right, so I wanna take you guys over to the sink and show you how I would prep my cups using an alternative to sandpaper. So if you don't wanna use sandpaper and acetone, you can either wet sand with a wet sandpaper or you can use a product like Final Sand from DIYEpoxy.com. This is just like a silica-based scouring agent that you could put on your cup and it's going to scuff up the surface while also using an effective detergent to clean off any contaminants. And I'm just using a maroon scouring pad to rub that all over the cup. It's going to rinse clean and not leave any kind of like contaminants or anything. And then you'll just dry it off with some paper towels. So that's how I would prep at the sink using something like Final Sand or Bonami or like Barkeeper's Friend that also works. So if you wanna use Bonami instead of Final Sand or something like that, super simple, same kind of process. You'll just pour a little bit onto the surface of your cup, scrub all over the whole cup, <laughs> same scouring pad, and then rinse it off. Um, make sure you don't have any kind of debris left on the cup there, and then you'll just dry it off with some paper towels. So just wanna show you guys all the different alternatives you can use to prep your cups, and they all work fabulously. All right, and now that our cup is properly prepped, I wanna talk about base paint. So I get a lot of questions about what kind of spray paint to use and why and when and all of that. And the long and short answer is you can pretty much use just about any kind of spray paint you want in almost any way that you want, as long as you're using proper technique. So when we're talking about using like a neon pink base paint, I would recommend when we're using any kind of fluorescent paints to use a flat white spray paint first. My favorite flat white spray paint is Rust-Oleum Two Time Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. This is flat, you can get it at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot. I think you can even get it on Amazon. Uh, and then I would just spray this first all over our cup or taped off or however you wanna make it work. And then once that's dry, which shouldn't take too long, it maybe takes about 15 minutes to dry, especially if you use a space heater or something to help you out, then we will spray paint with our fluorescent pink or whatever kind of fluorescent color that you like to use. Anytime we're using any sort of spray paint, the best technique that you can practice is shaking, shaking, shaking. One thing I like to do in a habit that I've developed over time is counting in my head for 60 seconds, at least, when I shake my spray paint. Fluorescent paints, I typically will shake for a total of two to three minutes. Whereas like white paints or more simpler colors, I'll maybe only shake for 60 seconds. And it's really important that you make that count in your mind or maybe you put a timer in on your phone to ensure that you have fully shaken everything. So any kind of issues that you might have with drips or uneven coverage or things like that could always be attributed to not properly shaking your paint, okay? So there's some other things that can cause drips and we'll go over that later on, but definitely you'll wanna make sure that you're shaking your paints. If you're using an ultra matte or a matte color, such as like Rust-Oleum's Two Time Ultra Cover Paints, they have a variety of beautiful colors in this formula. The ultra matte does not need a white base coat. You can just go straight for this it's got the paint and primer built in and you can spray this kind of formula directly onto your cup. I would even go as far to say as you can spray paint metallic finish paints directly onto your cup. I've done that many times before and it turns out just fine. When we're talking about base painting colors, the, you really don't have to get the best coverage that you think. It's just really got to mainly match the glitter color and the design that we're going with, and that's how I'll choose my paint colors. When we're talking about gloss paints, if there's a certain color that you want that only comes in a high gloss or a gloss paint, you can still spray paint those usually directly onto the cup, particularly if they're the paint and primer formula. 
you just need to make sure that you double shake these. So I would shake these for a good solid couple minutes and they do take a little bit longer to dry. Yes, you can epoxy right over high gloss spray paints. It's fine, depending on your epoxy formula. I have yet though to experience an epoxy that would not epoxy directly over high gloss spray paints and I've used Alumalite DIY Epoxies Artisan Blend and Counterculture <laughs> DIY both medium viscosity and art resin went right over spray paint just fine. So that's the, the answer to that question. So yes, you can use high gloss, you can use matte, ultra matte, whatever kind of spray paint you want. Um, I also really like this Color Shot blend. This Color Shot blend comes in many different shades. They usually just have gloss formulas, but it is very versatile paint that works great with what we do on these tumblers. So that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about the kind of paints that you can use for base paints. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't like to use spray paint or you're in a location where you're not able to spray paint, you can certainly use acrylic paints. My favorite acrylic paints to use are the Arteza acrylic paints because they have the best color payoff and coverage. So with the acrylic paints, you would just shake these up really well um, and then use kind of a wider soft bristle brush that will give you great coverage. And you might need to do a couple coats, particularly if you're using a more translucent glitter where the color below is really important because you'll kind of be able to see through the glitter. So you'll definitely want a nice even coverage of paint for your base coat with those more see-through colors. I rarely use acrylic colors for base coating just because I am able to spray paint where I'm at. And I just really prefer spray paint. You get beautiful color payoff really quickly and it dries super fast. Whereas these can take a little longer to dry depending on the temperature in your workspace and how many coats that you'll need to do. Generally, these will take me about a half hour to fully dry before I can get started on my epoxy and glitter and things like that. Next, I'm gonna show you guys my techniques for actually spray painting the cup that I find really helpful. Let's first start by showing you how I do just a plain white base coat. Here I am shaking up my can of paint for the 60 seconds, counting in my head and looking around. Once we've got that well shaken, I am just gonna start by doing uh, vertical strokes down the cup. If you notice, my paint can is always in motion. I never spray directly onto the cup in one static spray. It's always moving. So quick bursts and strokes of paint is what stops the drips from happening on your cup. Also shaking while you're in the middle of painting is great too. Um, again, well shaken paint is happy, good coating paint. <laughs> After I got all the vertical strokes up and down all around my cup, I'm gonna go horizontally now from side to side instead of up and down. I should have a mask while I'm doing this, um, even though I'm in a well ventilated area, cause you guys can see in the video how the overspray does come around my face and I'm breathing a lot of that in. So definitely be safe, definitely wear a mask when doing this. If I notice any spots that need to be resprayed, I'll just grab my can again and hit those really quick. And still I'm always using a quick stroke um, when I'm applying the paint, my can is always in motion. When I'm done spraying the color, I do spray my can upside down. This is going to prevent clogging and it's gonna clean out the nozzle once I'm done so I don't get those clogged nozzles, all right? And if you do get clogged nozzles, save the nozzles from your clear spray paint to use later or any you know empty paint can that had a good nozzle once the paint, once the paint was gone. Set those aside for later. If you have a clogged one, you can use one of these backups. I'm gonna show you how I paint multiple colors. Um, again, shaking all colors for at least 60 seconds, probably a little more since I'm using mostly gloss paints. Normally, I wouldn't have done a white base coat with all these colors, but I already have one here <laughs> or working on, so white base coat it is. And you'll notice after I spray paint a color, I will spray it upside down again to clear the nozzle before I set my, set my paint can down. That's a really good habit to get into. 
And when we're blending different colors of paint, it is super important to do quick, short bursts of paint, probably about eight to 10 inches away from your cup. The further away from your cup, the wider the fan of color, the closer to your cup, the smaller the fan of color. So if you're trying to get a wide blend of color, you would wanna spray further away. And if you wanna get more precise color or you're using a lot of different colors like I am here, you'll be spraying closer to your cup. that I go over all the colors more than once. And really all I'm trying to do there is color correct where I might have put one section a little too big or I didn't get a good blend how I wanted. I'll just go back over it. Um, and I'm working in a covered area. It's actually raining outside where I'm at. Uh, it's ideal to paint in a location that has like pretty warm weather. You don't wanna do this where it's super duper cold or if it's super duper wet. If it is, then you may wanna consider crafting some sort of paint booth with ventilation or something like that because um, that will also kind of mess up how your paint coats your cup. Um, I'm usually able to get a pretty good coat no matter the weather, no matter the temperature, as long as I stay out of the rain and I work fairly quickly. Also make sure that your paints are stored in the recommended temperature. That also helps. Making sure that your cup is at room temp or warmer when you're spray painting. Make sure your cup is not freezing cold and make sure your paint's not freezing cold. All right, so here we're all done with our base paint and we're ready to apply our glitter. This has been drying for about a half hour. I did put a space heater on it just to kind of help, you know, dry it off quickly. And I wanna get this a little bit warm to the touch before I apply my glitter if I'm using epoxy method. If you guys wanna see a video on how I would glitter a cup like this, you can find a link to some of my older tutorials down in the description box, that will help you out. And that concludes our video for the day. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, this was more of like a beginner kind of fundamental type video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you liked our video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a new video. I do upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.